Hey y'all. So this week we're going to talk about ProBuilder, uh, specifically ProBuilder 6.0.4 inside of Unity 6.1. The idea of ProBuilder and why you would want to use it is essentially for rapid prototyping and quickly creating 3D objects within your space. The tool does allow you to build, edit, and texture everything that you're doing within the scene. Um, so I have seen entire warehouses and scenes built out really only using ProBuilder as the modeling quote unquote kit. Um, so the idea is if you are someone who would use Maya, Max, C4D, Blender, et cetera, for your 3D modeling, some of the more basic operations that you'd need to do, such as extrusions or bridging edge loops, things like that, you can just do from right within the engine itself. So uh, I'm sure you already know this, uh, hence <laughs> it being pulled up in the background, but this is inside of Unity. So to use ProBuilder, you open up a Unity project. I've made a project 6.1 HDRP that I will pull up now. And the easiest way to get to it is essentially to go to window up at the top, come down into the package manager. All right, so now the Unity registry is loaded in so I can type in pro builder. And here is 6.0.4. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this. All right, so now that we have ProBuilder inside of our project, you'll notice that if you come up into tools, you can get into ProBuilder and see all of these different interactions and settings that you want to get into and what, what algorithms do you want to run on which pieces of object. The main thing though that I wanna point out is that all of this lives within the contextual menu. Uh, so that's that new system that we've talked about previously inside of Unity 6 in that every menu that you have has context around it. So this Pro Builder tool is effectively built into our tools menu here as create cube or create poly shape. So if I hold down left click on this create cube, I can create any type of shape. So let's say I wanna create a door. So now I can do that and in clicking on the bottom and then clicking to drag up, it's now created that door for me. Now to show something a bit more simple, here's a cube. So I drag out and then up. And then let's say I want to create a set of stairs. I can then do this and drag up and come over here and see that I now have stairs coming up this way. Now the cool thing is once something is a pro builder object or pro builder shape, which is something that you can add to an object that you have modeled and imported, meaning you could turn a, a character or a vehicle or anything that you've imported that you modeled in Maya um, into a pro builder shape and then edit it as such inside of the engine, which is pretty damn cool too. Um, but now that we have this, we can get in here and edit the shape and start to change things like scale and depth and height, et cetera. And it keeps that flexibility. So it's not a, uh, it's not rasterized per se. Uh, it still has all of these smart controls that you can use later on, which is really neat. And let's get out of edit shape. And let's say in the move tool, I just want to bring this right over here. And now all of a sudden I have something pretty interesting happening. And now instead of scaling this, I just want to go into edit shape. There we go. So now everything is kind of on a floor plane. All right. Awesome. So we have all that done. Now you might be thinking, okay, so how do we actually get in here and start editing these pieces more so than just on like the three metrics that they allow us based on scale and moving different pivots and whatnot. So this button up here in the top left, is going to allow you to do a lot more of the bespoke operations. And I'll show you how. So I just clicked on this icon, which now allows me to select a face. So let's say I select this face and I want to extrude it. Now, like all good 3D content creation software, um, you have hotkeys that you can just memorize or you have more contextual menus that you can basically bring up. So. The hotkey that I'm going to use is hold down shift and I'm going to drag out and now it's created an extrusion. So now I have new faces that I can work with here. 
if I wanted to instead extrude it without having to memorize the hotkey, I can just right click and I can hit extrude faces and then it will extrude out and I can kind of control what I want and how much I want it there. The next thing that you're probably wondering is, okay, well, that's cool. Um, I would like to select a line or a vert uh, or something comparable. The tricky thing about the cool new contextual menu is that it doesn't always have up all the needed menus by default I've found. So what I would do is go down here into basically my overarching UI menu of what do I want to be showing here? What overlays do I want? And I'm going to open up the tool settings menu. And now I want to pull that, let's just say up here, I'll pull tools to the left of that. So now everything is snapped up here how I like. But now I have some, uh, some different options. So you can see that face is already selected. So what I want to do is go into vertices. And now all of a sudden we have vertices. So I can start to shift click vertices and move these around. And I'm just going to turn off my snapping really quickly because that is getting obnoxious. And to do that, again, the menu is not up, so I'm going to open it of grid and snap, and I'm going to turn off that little magnet because it is not what I want today. And just to make sure that this doesn't look too strange, I'm going to grab all of these and pull them out together. And let's say if I really wanted to, I could select two, and I could try to collapse the vertices into one piece, which starts to do some funky stuff, but is kind of interesting. So let's say I leave that. Let's go back into face select mode here. I'm also going to turn off a couple of the menus that I don't really need right now. And let's say I want to extrude this triangle piece. So now I can click that, right click, and I can hit extrude. So now it's going to allow me to pull this way out here. So this almost takes me back to Counter-Strike 1.6 surf maps or something. It's, why not? Let's say we're making one. Another few things that we could do would be if you come into like the cut tool, which is already up here as kind of a quick set menu item, I can then click on a line and create some nice quick cuts. Let's say I like this, so I can grab this face and I could then hold down shift and drag it out. And now all of a sudden that's created an interesting extrusion off to the side. So let's say this is like the start area, who knows? But the point is, all of this is possible. I'm generating and creating this 3D content from within Unity. And the idea is that this is extremely extensible. You can get in here and start to add in scripts and create things by default, like doorways that have doors that will open when you hit the E key. Uh, we could get in here and start to get into more of the deeper programming. But for now, just wanted to talk through the UI and how it's a little bit buried right now, and I think in a state of, uh, of being worked on. But once you get the edit tool open here, getting your different selection modes that you can get into, uh, this also, just for you to know, holds the hidden element selections and things like that. It also controls if you want to have multi-select, etc. So now I'm just going to do a demo for maybe five, 10 minutes just to show if I had to build an element using Pro Builder, how would I go about it? All right, so now we have this cool shape that we are working with. And then let's say I could either create a new piece. Let's just do that really quickly to show what that looks like. Let's say I do this for this wall and then drag up. And I can kind of play with this and get it all to look just right and move it into space. Let's turn back off the magnet tool. Or I could come over here and I can do things like extrude further and then extrude up. So if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to create a window off of this, I can go into edit. Once I'm in edit, I want to have face select, grab that face, right click, hit extrude faces. Click the face on top, right click, extrude faces, drag up. And now you can start to see how we would build this out. The other cool thing is if you grab a, actually let's just use this cube. And let's say this is much smaller. Uh, 
I can now come over here and if I bring this up just a bit, I could then go into edit mode, grab the faces, and right click and extrude. And now they all extrude outward. And I could come back into here and let me say delete face and delete face. And now I can go into line select mode. And then let's say you want to grab like this line and this line, right click, come down, bridge edges, that line and that line. Let's bridge the edges. Again. And now we have a window that we've basically created right here inside of Unity, which is pretty cool. So now I'm going to get out of edit. I'm going to drop this down come back over into this piece, edit. All right, so now that I'm here, the window is set. I could come in here and grab these faces and select subdivide if I right click and hit subdivide. And I could keep doing that until I had enough edges that I could just drive the edges up. I can also come in here with the cut tool. So let's say I come in here with cut and I do that to up here. Call that good. And then I come over here with the cut tool and do gear down, something like that. So there that cut goes there. Here we're going to cut again and just bring this right across and hit enter. And then we'll come down on the other side too. So if I want to use the cut tool here, boom, enter, and then use the cut tool. And you can see it, it still takes a moment if you get super manual with your uh, topology, if I dare use that word with a, uh, a non-modeling software, um, but that's the idea. So now I can come over here into faces and I can grab these two faces and then I can either hold shift and drag up or I could right click and hit extrude and then bring these up here and you can get kind of what we're going for here. So let's say I do shift and drag up one more time. And then these two faces here, we essentially want to bridge together. So I'm going to delete the faces. I'll come right back in and grab my lines and I'm going to bridge these lines. All right, and then we'll bridge our last edges here. And now we have a window that looks pretty intentional that's inside of our scene. If I get out of edit mode, you can hardly tell that it was put in there haphazardly inside of Unity itself. Maybe there's a cool moment that happens there. But there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with this. So now we have something pretty special that we're starting to build. We could throw in a third person controller and start running around the scene, but this is the idea, right? So you can get in here and use a lot of these cool tools that you would not have otherwise, like filling in holes and inserting edge loops, etc. So you can see how I just inserted that edge loop there. Super cool. I hope you learned something from this. Get in, check out Pro Builder. It's extremely fun to create new things in. It's a great way to get in some rapid prototyping as a developer or someone that works more in the engine. And then if you find something really fun, you can always export it from Unity as an FBX using the FBX exporter package. Get that back into Maya and have your artist model whatever they want. So let me know if you have any questions. This is Pro Builder and how I tend to use it. There's a ton more, and I'd love to dig in deeper if y'all are interested. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.